this is what Interact is. This is what we do. And this is why you'd want to get started outside of growing an email list, right? Because I'm like, well, we have this feature and this feature. And now we have AI mm-hmm. and this. Hey, that's too much, too much, Jackie. So I have to definitely craft that message of how do I get this elevator pitch down a little bit shorter? All right. Hi, guys, and welcome back to Interact's Grow Podcast. So great to be with you always. I'm your host, Jasmine Solana, and with us today we have all four of us, Jackie, Damaris, Jesse. Welcome back, everyone. Woo! Hi! Hi. <laughs> um, we just came back from our second in-person conference that we've sponsored ever, And we thought we'd give you guys a little bit of a recap today of the Creative Educators Conference that we had in Dallas, Texas, and then um, maybe talk a little bit about the top three things that people were asking us at this conference and answer that for you guys. Who wants to get started? Sounds exciting. I can start just by saying... What a really awesome show. I think something that happened different than what we experienced last time at the Travel Blogging Summit was these late night sessions. Mm. So we're in Nashville. We were like out on Broadway, partying it up with our new friends. Here, it was like very intentional late night conversations in the hotel lobby. So you had a little time to like regroup, regather, eat, sleep, whatever you needed after the conference. Um, But then like four hours after, so that ended at four, around eight o'clock, a bunch of people, mostly everybody, I think, from the show attended, including sponsors, would just meet down in the lobby in our sweatpants, which was fun because it kept it really casual. And we just got to meet as friends, chat, hang out. But it also like wasn't an inappropriate time to talk about business either. So it was like fun business chats without getting into like, I don't know, not too much detail, but it wasn't like too heavy. Like we weren't like working, um, but it was really nice to hear like what's top in front of people's minds, what they're working on outside of quizzes, um, and just getting to connect with them on a personal level. I think that's really important. I liked that time too, because during the like normal hours of the conference, there's so much information that's going out because you're watching session after session and, you know, you're getting all this info. There's multiple sponsors there and it's, as if I were an attendee, my thought would be like, okay, that's great that there are these sponsors, but like, where do I want to divide my time? I want to like meet people. I want to um, listen to like what these uh, speakers have to say. I want to like be able to meet these speakers. Um, So the late night chats were actually like a really good opportunity to actually go around and talk to each other rather than waiting for people to come to our table or us like, you know, interrupting people meeting each other, you know, in their normal conversations. Yeah, I I found it interesting when I was talking to some of the attendees. A lot of these attendees were already in an established business. They had been for quite some time um, and they really were just trying to scale, right? And just become more successful and, and learn different techniques to sort of scale out their business. And it was very interesting to just hear their story, how they came out to be, how successful or not successful they've been, the hurdles that they've gone through, um, and sort of just not only hear them out, but also like, you know, have us as our input, like, what do you guys think? Like, what do you guys, what have you guys seen? Or like, you know, what type of different businesses have you guys encountered? And and just have that dialogue was, was refreshing, really, because we normally do it like, in a chat, you know, chat functionality or an email functionality, but actually doing it in purpose. It almost felt like I was having a mini strategy call without yeah. it being very like proper, you know, it was, it was very refreshing. So learned a lot. I love that. Before we hop into the three questions you guys mostly got asked, I'm curious, did you guys feel that was easier to answer people, answer people's questions in regards to quizzes or lead generation or anything about interact in person versus online, how we usually do it? I had huge brain farts. Yeah. I think it was easy for Jackie because she's a pro at networking over here. Uh, well, I was going to say that's a, that's a really good question because – To be honest, I love to reply to answers in emails 
with mm-hmm. YouTube video links, which is like way mm-hmm. faster and easier in a sense that the content's already been recorded. I don't have to like change or craft my answer to what the question is. It's like a generic answer to answer that, right? But in person, you can get much more specific because I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you just asked me this, but tell me more about your business so I can understand what the goal is here, right? Because of, so I guess in that regard, being more specific, giving an answer that truly aligns to like their business or like not their question. Cause we always answer their question, but do you know what I'm saying? Like we, we mm-hmm. it's just like a m- even more personal answer because you're, you're right there. And it's not like you have to say, well, can you tell me a little bit about your business before I answer this? And then that's like days of emails going back and forth where this is just yeah. like happening really quick. Right there and there. Thing at you, that you said that because um, not to give away, but the biggest question I was asked was like, what is interact? So tell me about you mm-hmm. yourself, you know? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I have so much to say. And I had a problem with condensing it down into this is what Interact is. This is what we do. And this is why you'd want to get started outside of growing an email list, right? Because I'm like, but we have this feature and this feature. And now we have AI mm-hmm. and this. And, hey, that's too much, too much, Jackie. So I have to definitely craft that message of how do I get this elevator pitch down a little bit shorter? Because that's the hardest thing for me. I get too excited when I'm in person and I could just talk forever. And they don't have forever. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Do you guys feel like, like do you guys feel like the conference attendees like were they overloaded with information? Like just cuz you know sitting yeah. with speakers or did it seem like they were able to actually grasp everything? I think a trend that sorry Damaris, I was just going to say that like compared to the last conference, the same thing happened where the first day we didn't get a lot of traction. And then the mm-hmm. second day because it's the last day was when people were actually coming to learn more about what we do. Yeah. So people were dialed in the first day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think what I what I ended up doing the second day, which worked for me, was when people came in, oh, tell me, you know, about quizzes or whatever the case. I let them talk for two, three minutes what they did, what they were trying to do. And then I just literally was like, let's just create your quiz right now. <laughs> let's just do it right now. You're telling me what you're doing. So um, let's get it done. And, and, and it was, it was refreshing because I kind of used, uh, what I do every day here and then kind of put it in live version with them there and they were, and it worked out, but it was, it is more difficult, I think, to just kind of think on your toes when you're there. Right. Cause you're just yeah. like, oh uh, yeah. Okay. You have to think about all these different things that you can want to say. Um, but it was fun. Nevertheless, it was a fun experience. On that just point, to that, I feel like every conference you sort of walk away overwhelmed because every single speaker was yeah. there for a reason. They had something really awesome to share and to say, and it can relate back to your business in different ways. So there were what, probably 10 speakers throughout the entire conference, maybe even a few more than that. Can you implement 10 things in your business next week? No, that's extremely difficult and it can be extremely overwhelming. So spoiler alert, something we're working on lately, the conference host with is a post-conference quiz. And this is something I've been wanting to test out for a while. So anybody listening who has ideas or wants to jump on this, let us know. Um, But essentially, can you give a quiz at the end of the conference that condenses down to like the top three things that you should do based on your current season or state, whatever it is, um, to take away from the conference, because it's unrealistic to expect That's everybody right. to implement all of the things, right? So what are like the mm-hmm. top the top one or top three takeaways that you should really hone in on uh, based on everything that we all learned together? I love that. That's I'm very excited to see how that quiz turns out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even for us, I think that we even learned a lot from the speakers as they were, um, you know, one of them was copywriting, the other one was taxes and business, you know, and like tech integration, it was, it was a lot of information and we weren't even the attendees. We knew a lot of these things, but we're like, oh, that's interesting. We've never thought of it this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. We've never, you know, it was, it was, it was refreshing for sure. I was going to say that, like, I think, you know, at least like from a sponsor's perspective, you can't expect to get all the signups right away, even with the last conference that we went to, it was like a trickle effect of, you know, continuing to nurture those people. And um, we had a quiz for both conferences, different quizzes, but the same idea. Um, Having that quiz out on the internet, something for people to come back to later was super important. And so for this one, I think like what'll be really cool is 
because more people knew about Interact. And I think like a lot of the speakers were already using Interact. So they had that, um, you know, sh- sort of shout out for us, I guess, from the speakers. Mm-hmm. They, I'm interested to see like how much more engaged they'll be in thinking about quizzes or, you know, implementing quizzes, whether it's now or in a few months. It was so, it was, I think it was a shock for all of us that, um, well, we knew that people knew about Interact, right, when we went to the conference, but I just don't think that we knew how much we were going to get shut out and we were going to uh, be, you know, people were talking about us and it was a very, I, for me, it felt very comforting and felt very, felt very proud because I was like, oh my God, like, this is, this is so crazy. Like, I didn't really realize the impact that we have been having this whole entire time. And it kind of just, it kind of just hit me there where we're live in the conference. I was like, oh, wow. Like this is, this is really, really happening. You know, um, it was exciting to see. And I think Damaris, it goes so much more beyond the number of leads people have collected, right? Cause like that we knew about, we knew that impact that we were making. We're the easiest, fastest quiz builder, a uh, very intuitive tool. It works. We get, we see a 40% conversion rate with our quizzes, but we didn't expect, or I guess, you don't always think about the impact that you make in other people's lives, like the amount of sales that they've boosted because of a quiz funnel, the amount Mm -hmm. of data and information they've collected about their audience to pivot or make offers for people based on what they need. That was really fun and awesome to hear because you don't necessarily get that level of excitement and detail. It's just like, well, yeah, my quiz converted because look at my analytics and I hit this many leads, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. the impact I think that Damaris is saying is like, we, we interact. It is we. <laughs> we change people's lives. Like quizzes really completely yeah. pivoted and changed people's businesses for the better because of the connection that you're making with, with each lead who signs up. So that was really powerful. Yeah. And just my last thought, and then we can change Jasmine, but it was very... It was amazing to see that a lot of the things that we talk about, that we coach about, that we tell our customers, a lot of these things were being reiterated by the speakers. And it was really validating on our end, like, okay, this is like really great educational content that we're we're telling our customers and it really does work. And it was just more of a validation to move forward and expand. Um, and I think that was very comforting for for all of us. I think I would. I mean, I don't know if it was for you guys, but it was for me for sure. Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, the last thing I wanted to say too was same thing as the last conference we went to. I think you know meeting people in person was just such a game changer for us as a remote software company. You know, we don't always get to meet like our customers. Or we don't always get to like you know walk people through the process of creating a quiz in person, and you know. Obviously, not that I would want to go into an office because I love being remote, but every (laughs) once in a while, it is really cool to kind of sit down with someone, talk about their business, walk through the builder with them, walk through like whatever issues they're having and take a look at their website. We were even trying to troubleshoot someone's show it website. And I was, oh my like, God, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we don't, I don't know how to do this. I was like, yeah. Yeah, help. Um, I've never used a uh, show it, but I was like, let me, let me see. I wasn't the one who fixed the problem. Shout out to, to Don Richardson for actually doing that um, and helping that customer out. But, you know, you don't get that experience when you're a remote company. And so getting to do that in person was just really valuable. Yeah, and I love not, that. Not just new customers, like talking about people who are using a quiz for the first time, but like this person who had the issue with Show It. They had a quiz, the quiz was implemented, and they wanted to talk strategy about it. So like, mm-hmm. this is what's happening now, but based on what you're saying, or based on what I've heard, maybe I should change some things up, or I don't think this is working, or whatnot. So getting to talk to existing customers who are using the tool and ways to improve upon or optimize their their quiz funnels was was really exciting as well. So there's like two conversations that you get to have based on yeah. if someone's using Interact yet or not. And looking at their their analy- analytics, yeah. can speak. looking at their analytics through their, um, you know, through their account, because our back end doesn't look the same. But like getting to actually see the breakdown of like, this is why this question is doing well. This is why that question is doing well. And telling people like, hey, in the future, look out for this. You know, here's how to like look at your analytics. And like they can ask you questions in real time. And there was one person um, that we chatted with who basically said their quiz wasn't working. Quizzes didn't work for them. I can't remember if they had stopped using Interact or not, 
But when we looked at the analytics with them, we saw, I think just was it like 30 leads in total that this yeah. person had in and they were expecting thousands because if you look at some of our case studies, that's what you see. 700% list growth, 3,000 to 70,000 subscribers, right? But when we talked like more directly with this person and what their goals were, they only sign on two to three clients per month, right? So that's like a few years worth of mm -hmm of clients that you mm -hmm. don't have to go looking for because just 30 leads came through your quiz. Yeah. So that was really fun to see too, because you, you get to see like peek into people's minds, right? Like what mm -hmm. you expected something to happen, but you actually don't want thousands of leads at a time. Like your business can't even manage that. So why were you expecting to get that much? Why did you want to get that many people? And she kind of was like, oh, you know, that that makes sense. And then we pivoted and maybe quizzes make more sense for her to use with her affiliate links instead of mm -hmm. her client pitches, whatever she, what she, the services she sells. But there's so many different use cases for quizzes. So you, you get to hear so much more about them when you're in situations like this, just face to face with customers and people, I mean, I guess, right? Like you sign up for a conference for that sort of network and the community and it just naturally happens where people just want to talk to us. Whereas if you're online and you're like, I'm from Interact, tell me more. They're like, spam. <laughs> you know, I, know they, I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. So true. It really like puts a face behind, um, I mean, I guess like the name, but like mostly the company. If you're especially like working in a software company, I feel like it's hard to sort of equate who you're talking to as like a real person. But in that conference setting, especially with the late night chats, it was like, you know, oh, this is like a human. Yeah. And then it, you make like a different connection, I think, than to just like, um, how many sales can we get at a conference, right? How many people can we get to sign up for a subscription? And it's like, ah, eh, I think like the, what we like to do is just like talk to people, get a feel for like their business. Does it work for them? Does it not work for them? What the best yeah. course would be? Um, and yeah, go from there. Yeah. I think everybody was shocked. We were like, oh yeah, it's only like 12 or 13 of us. They're like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> I was going to say that every time we drop that stat, people are shook at how small the yeah. interaction is. So <laughs> kudos to interact. Kudos. Being small and mighty. Um, Jesse, any other questions before we jump into like top three questions? No, I think I'm sure I'll have some follow-up questions after these though. <laughs> As we keep going. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wanted to jump into the top three questions that we got at the conference because I think – it, it's such a unique situation, like I said, to get somebody to bring their computer to you and be like, here's my business or here's my existing quiz, like help me. Um, who wants to go first, Jackie, Damaris? I mean, maybe this question, I feel like the, the biggest question I got, and maybe I just think this because it was the question I least liked to answer, but was that main question of like, tell me about Interact. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. wasn't why should I use Interact? What is Interact? It was just like, tell me about Interact. I love and that so question. <laughs> yeah, I think that one's my favorite. The ones where I, uh, where people are like, "Here's my whole business now. Help me make a quiz." I'm like, ah, oh, I feel like I need to sit down. I need to like look through your website, and like I want to have maybe it's a perfectionist thing. I want to have like a really thoughtful answer. So having somebody ask me that on the spot was a little bit more difficult when we went to Nashville for the travel bloggers conference um, almost everyone was you know tell me about interact like that was the main question and I like got it down whereas this one it was such a mix of like different types of businesses different situations and so that tripped me up a little bit um, I gotta yeah. say it, like help me make a quiz but yeah I think in terms of you know tell me about interact, for me, one of the biggest things to note was um, obviously lead generation quizzes, duh. But I think what was important for me to to point out to people was sort of the history behind Interact. I guess it's different for me. I've been here for six years now. And when I started, there was five of us. And so telling people like sort of that progression of, you know, our co-founders founded this in college a little bit of their backstory and then going into like my time here so they could see like the timeline um it was like a pretty big answer for me and I don't know if that's because a lot of the people there were partners I had signed up 
years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had already this connection of when people asked, tell me about Interact. I was like, oh, I worked with all these people here. Mm -hmm. I feel like, Jackie, you were also being asked a lot about like affiliate stuff and like partner stuff as well because you're a growth manager. So I think that that was more organic for you because um, a lot of the speakers were already sort of talking about quizzes and as you know, and using quizzes. So um, we did direct some people to you like, oh, well, this is Jackie. Come and talk to her. She's right here. I think that was easy. I don't know if that was easier for you or not, since you typically do all of that by email normally. Was that different? No, I love the strategy questions. I love the, that's what just why we work so well together because I think like two people came up to us at one time and we we're like, who's going to take who? We're like, well, you love that question. I love this question. So let's swap. Yeah. Um, but no, I love to dig into the strategy. Um, I love to hear more about what their business is doing, what they're trying to, 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 to do with a quiz or just with their business in general and how a quiz can support that. Because I think my day to day is all about finding these different use cases, highlighting them for our customers and for our affiliate partners to then go out and say, hey, look, you can use Interact for all in all of these different ways, not necessarily just lead gen, but mostly lead gen for sure. Um, so n- no, it wasn't the same. No, I mean, yeah, it was the same, like in terms of the, the the thought process and how I get into it, but I love talking, not typing. So it's so much easier for me to just be in front of you and, hey, let's hash it out and build your quiz right now. Um, like Damaris was saying, you're talking t- to somebody and you're like, I would do this. I would do this. Wait a second. We have a whole AI feature. Let's just do it right now together. And I was able to email off somebody's quiz right then and there. And they're so thankful for that because now when they finish the conference and they go home and they have to think about all the stuff that they want to implement, the quiz is already done. It's in their it's in their interact account all she has to go is do and do is connect it with flowdesk and put it on her website easy jackie for the people that you know maybe a quiz didn't make sense for their business but it would make sense for their you know students or clients um in their course like can people be an affiliate and not have their own quiz Totally. Yeah. We have a bunch of affiliates in our program right now um, who do or don't use Interact quizzes. Um, And there's different reasons for that, right? Like we spoke, we talked about that one person earlier who said quizzes don't work because she's only looking for two to three clients per month. So a quiz could work in a different way, like sharing affiliate links or maybe sort of like a grading process of, hey, you've Mm -hmm. been through my services. Where are you at now with your business? Is it improving? Are things changing? And that's totally different than the general sense of when you come into our website, like you're using a quiz for lead generation, expect to blow up your email list, right? So like really getting clear on, now I totally lost track of the question, but just really getting can, clear like, on. If, if they can have a quiz without having, yeah. oh, no, sorry, if they can have an affiliate link without having a quiz. Yeah. So I think the the short answer to that would be yes. As long as you understand that quizzes have multiple purposes, you understand the strategy behind using a quiz and how they really work. Um, Because if you can't convey that to your client or to your referral, it's going to be even more difficult for them to want to to join. So typically customers have a better conversion rate in the sense that they're sharing their quiz experience, the results Mm -hmm, that they've got, mm -hmm. the problems that they've solved with using their quiz and how someone can get started. Whereas if you're not using a quiz or you're not familiar with Interact, you're going to have a a different angle, right? But like, can someone trust you that this is the right tool for them? And we don't want to uh, have those people sending Interact to the wrong people either, right? Like if you're too new to your business, maybe a quiz, it's, it's not the time for a quiz right now. So just making sure that our affiliate partners know that and who they're talking to whether they use the quiz or not. Yeah. I was going to say too that um, it goes back to like the goals of your business. There are some people that I talked to at the conference that were like, I'm really interested in affiliate income and like, that's it. I just like want to, you know, kind of recommend products that I really like, but I don't necessarily like want to use it. And so I think it's just a really interesting point there on the other side of that. I think people thought that you have to have a quiz in order to be a part of the affiliate program which like you were saying, like in some ways it's helpful because then you know the software, but you don't necessarily need to be using it. 
We we have a, a partner, his name is Roman, does not use quizzes, and he was like a true affiliate, right? Like he's not mm. a customer, he's not a blogger, he's not selling online services that I know of. He's a true affiliate in the sense that he's going out online and he's looking for people who are searching for, like a- asking or searching for the answer that Interact solves. So mm-hmm. people who are looking to grow their email list, people who want to recommend products and offerings, people who want to segment their list. Um, people who are looking for new softwares or new ideas within their business. And so he's not using Interact, but he understands how Interact works and why it works. So he's going into those, um, usually it's like Quora chats or or Reddit threads, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, he's finding these people online through social media and he's just commenting with his affiliate link. Like, hey, I think Interact would be super supportive because here's Mm -hmm. the answer to your question and how Interact would solve that. Mm -hmm. So that he's a perfect example of somebody who does not use quizzes himself because he doesn't have an email list. He doesn't want mm-hmm. to make one, but he's just making affiliate income by recommending tools that he understands uh, how they work and he knows that they're they're successful. So his his referrals are going to be successful when they use it. Right. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, so I was going to jump into another question that I think we got a lot, which was, and you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier with that example, Jackie, but like, oh, I, I used you guys before. I, I had a quiz, but you know, I, I either didn't get like a lot of leads or I didn't get like the volume that I thought I would get or the other, like to the other side of that, they didn't know how to promote the quiz. Um, I think what was interesting for me in that question was looking at people's websites and the number one question I had back was, well, where is your quiz? Where'd you put it? Uh, and they were like, oh, you know, it's in this blog post, like somewhere in my blog. Yeah. Yeah, that I that and then they couldn't find it. And it was like, I think that's the number one thing is, it's not necessarily the content of your quiz. It's, you know, where your quiz is, no one can find it. And so putting it on the front page of your website, whether it's like a pop up, I know we talk about this all the time, but like a pop up, a sidebar announcement bar, um, embedded as a button right into that homepage is a really big thing. And I think what was kind of funny from that too was hearing people go, oh, so that's it? That's all I have to do? And I was like, I mean, yeah, (laughs) that's all you got to do. Try it out first. And then if you feel like, you know, you're still not getting the same number or like it's not improving, then let's revisit and talk about it again. I have a quick question. I know like in person, it's totally different to deal with people coming up to you. And as our company, like someone hearing them say like, you're like it would, didn't work for me you know quizzes don't work for me did they approach you guys kind of like it's interacts fault like quizzes don't work for me or was it more so like they're like yeah I tried it like easy going it just wasn't right for me you know or did they come up to interact like it's interacts fault it's not good I, I, I don't like say, the product yeah I wouldn't say that it was like more so they're saying it was our fault I think it was because they were hearing other people say such good things about it Mm-hmm. And like, clearly we were a sponsor there. So they're like, well, why? It was more of like, why isn't it working for me? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And not that they were like totally closed off to using it. It was just like, it started off with this, like, I don't know why, why it's not working for me or like, hey, it's not working for me. And then after asking some questions, it was like, try this. And like, if you still feel like it's not working for you, then, you know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, because there, there's one person at the conference that I had this conversation with, and it's happened a couple times online as well, where you're running ads to your quiz and the quiz isn't converting. But usually, at least from what I've seen, it has more to do with the ad than it does with mm-hmm. your quiz. Like if people aren't even clicking in to start taking your quiz, then it's likely the ad that you're showing that to the, the quiz, the ad that you're showing Oh my God, what t- words. <laughs> the people are trying to show the quiz too, right? So like, do they align with your ideal customer? Do they mm-hmm. actually need your service? Is the ad clear enough in what they're going to get if they click the button? Um, so that's, a, that's it's, it's all things to, to consider, right? Like it could be your quiz, but it also could be just the way the tech displays. Like this Show It website had an issue where the quiz wasn't accurately displaying, so nobody mm-hmm. could take it, right? Mm-hmm. So I think what Jess um, touched on is it's when you compare yourself to other people, you're Mm -hmm. expecting those same results. And that's not going to happen because your business is totally different. So I don't, I I agree. I don't think it was necessarily like interact sucks, right? But it was like, (laughs) this isn't working for me. 
So therefore I either gave up, right? Or now that you're in front of me, tell me why it's not working. Help me get to that result, that answer faster. Get really clear. What's your use case? What's your goal? How many leads do you actually want to convert? What are you going to do with those people when they get on your list? Mm -hmm. And then work backwards from that. How do you get this quiz that actually solves that person's problem in front of the people that need that problem solved? There was also Mm -hmm. that distinction between like, oh, I see people get thousands of leads versus like they maybe had like that example, it was like 30 or there was another one where she had like hundred hundreds of something leads, but the conversion rate was still 40 to 50%. And I was like, I don't think, I don't think generating leads and, and conversion rates are problem. I think like one, maybe it's the number of views and maybe looking back at like what you said earlier, Jackie, of like, why, why do you want thousands of leads? You know, what does your business model look like? to to get that and and what are you really using a quiz for in your business the other i want to give one more example of this i just got really excited about it because i'm hoping a case study is coming out on this soon once we've <clears throat> once she's tested this on her end Uh, But one customer, existing interact customer came up to me and said that her freebie, which was just like a resource opt-in, right, converted way better than her quiz, which she didn't expect. I was shocked to hear and I had to hear more about it, right? Like, what are you doing differently that people are subscribing so frequently to this freebie Mm opt-in, but they're not subscribing to your quiz? So immediately she wanted to talk about the quiz, right? Like maybe it's the title, maybe it's blah, blah, blah. But I asked her, I'm like, where are you sharing the quiz on social media? Okay. And when she posts about it, it would be like, my link is in bio or here's the link to access my quiz. Of course, if it's a story, you can add a link there, but Mm -hmm. in like an actual post and in the comments, you can't tap, like you can't hyperlink Mm -hmm. the link to your quiz, right? So people, you have to expect that they can go to your link in bio or whatever your quiz is, find it, click it, take it. That's a lot of extra steps Mm -hmm. with the freebie i asked her okay where are people subscribing from the freebie on social media they have to dm me the word whatever the word was and they'll Mm -hmm. get the freebie through there and i'm like okay well why don't you try to have them dm you the word quiz and send the quiz right to them in the dm it's a lot less steps that they have to go through to access and subscribe through the quiz Uh, so that's something she's trying right now And when we talked about it, she was just like, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? But it's because we're business owners and we're all doing all the things at the same time, right? So Mm -hmm. when you step back and you really get clear on what am I trying to do here, it can make a lot more sense. So I'm really excited to see if that makes a difference in in her quiz conversion without making any changes to her quiz, just simply in the way that people get it delivered to them so they can access it. Yeah. Because if you have to search too hard to find that quiz link, people are not going to I mean, unless it's a really, really amazing quiz question that they want to find out, right? They can't find it. They can't take your quiz. You're not going to get the lead. Right. Mm-hmm. Tamara, Tamara segue to question. Oh. Um, it was a similar question to what you said, Jasmine, but I think the question that I was getting a couple of, it was several times I got the question, like, I've heard about quizzes, you know, quizzes are great, but what, like, what, what is, what a, how can I use this quiz in my business with my business strategy that I currently have? Um, so I had a couple of people that asked me that question. And interestingly enough, like in some of them, luckily some of the speakers were already using right, the quizzes as a lead magnet. So I, I showed them some examples of how they're using it, the strategy that they're using, how they're implementing it. Then I asked them what they're currently doing. And they were really, they were really shocked to they were really shocked when I sort of presented the different ways that quizzes can be used, whether on their website or as an offering or, you know, as an, as a follow-up email, however it was. And he, he, they even asked me like, Oh, can they be used to eliminate people? Yeah, of course. Like you don't want them. If you don't want people that have a budget under 10,000, for example, you can eliminate them out. And so it was interesting to back to it. And this all ties in what we've been talking this whole time is just like, what specific strategy you're trying to do with the quiz and just sort of cater it to what you need it for. Um, another another customer, same thing. How can I use a quiz for my business specifically? And that's actually the one, Jasmine, that you recorded me that I was building her quiz for her. And she was like, oh, oh yeah. my God, I've had a quiz this whole entire time. Mm-hmm. And you just made a quiz with AI and it literally aligned more to what the one that I had done first. <laughs> um, and I was like, Yay, that's great to hear. So it was just it was just more 
I think more specific questions about like their business and like what they wanted to do with the quiz versus what we typically get, which is just like very general questions. Right. And you know, on that note, I think like, it's interesting, like using the AI to create your quiz is a great starting point. We say this all the time and we're going to, we're going to record an episode on sort of what your results content should look like at some point. But I think what's, I don't know, like an objection to using AI for a quiz is like, well, I don't want to ask the same questions as other people. She felt like it aligned more. But on top of that, it's like the questions don't necessarily, you know, matter to other people's content. What matters is like your services, how you show up, what your results page look like, what the customer journey looks like and your funnel and how you kind of cater to your clients. And so using AI to create your quiz is actually going to be like much more beneficial so that you don't have to think about like, you know, oh, what questions should I be asking? Let the AI do that part for you. And I kind of love that example of her feeling like, oh, I didn't even think of these questions. Yeah. And they really aligned with like her brand voice. Like it was like, oh my God, this is actually like really good questions that I would probably ask at some point in my conversation with, with you know, with the client. I'm like, this is great. This is what we love to hear. Tell me more. <laughs> it's great. It. Go ahead. I think I have one question that I kind of heard about while you guys were at the conference, but I just want to confirm it. How many speakers at the conference used a quiz and how did they use it and kind of like what were their results? Tamaris, you want to tell this one? Because I was in the back chatting with Dahlia, who Tamaris is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We were like, where's Jackie? <laughs> where have you been? Um, it was, so at that, at this point, it was the second day of the conference and, you know, quizzes were sort of a buzz. Everybody was, you know, talking about quizzes, interact. And then one of the speakers came up and they used their quiz with us as a lead magnet to get the audience engaged. Like that was the first call to action. They were like, oh, please scan this QR code and take the quiz with me. Um, and she literally had like how many, maybe like a hundred opt-ins less than that, right in like five seconds of just introducing the quiz. And then, you know, she went over the results. And so it was, it was so, so amazing to see that play out live. I was like, oh my God, this is like gold because she was already using her quiz, I think uh, for a while. And she's a partner as well. Um, I'm not actually really sure on the analytics side, like how many, how successful a quiz has been like numbers wise, but I know it has been already successful. And she kept her QR code the entire time she was speaking. Um, she elaborated, she talked about what she did and it turned out very good. Even after that, people were coming up to us like, oh my God, that's a great idea. Like this is something I've never thought about. So that's the one that comes top of mind. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you want to add anything more to that, but you certainly can. No, I think it was, yeah, it was really exciting because I think we've seen this before. It happened in Nashville where the presenter would end on a slide with a QR code with their main CTA and sometimes from the stage, it's a great way to segment your leads when they come into your audience and learn more about them. But what I'm just going to spoiler alert, it was Ellen Yin because we're writing a blog post on this and we already got the stats from her. So we'll link that when we have it. Um, but the fact that she actually used the quiz as her presentation mm -hmm. was very different. She walked yeah. through each person, get like Tamara said, get out your phones. We're going to answer question one. And she would talk about the psychology behind the questions. And she did it in a way where it wasn't so much like I'm getting all this information about you guys, but it was showing the audience because it her quiz was what's your CEO style uh, or CEO type. I think it's CEO style. style. Uh, and so style. So she did it more in a way where it was like, when you understand this level of information about your audience, when yeah. you use your quiz, this yeah. is what you can get out of it. But bonus points for her, she's collecting those emails so she can connect with all the people that she met at the conference um, because they were subscribing right through her quiz in the session that she was telling them to take her quiz in. So it was really cool to see that. Yeah. And at the That's end, powerful. At the end, she basically had people raise their hands of like, who got this result? And then like live talked about like that result. And then who got this result? Live talked about this result. And what I loved about that was that um, 
one, it gives people an opportunity to come up to you afterwards and say, hey, I got this result. Like, tell me more about, you know, how you help people like CEOs of this type. Um, and or two, like if she recognizes anyone, she could be like, oh, yeah, I remember you raised your hand like for result one. Like, let's talk about it. Like, it's just like a, such a good entrance point. Like we talk about how that works through email that works online all the time. But this was happening in person and very much an opportunity to already have a conversation starter with people who could be potential clients down the road. The other thing that you're getting as a speaker when you do that, when you're showing like, hey, pulse check, who's who's which result, or even pulling up the intera- interact analytics on the screen and showing the breakdown of mm-hmm. how people are answering questions or the results that they got, it tells you as a speaker who you're in front of right now. So yeah. you can craft mm-hmm. your pitch to talk more to the magnetic connectors versus, sorry, Ellen, I'm blinking on the other, the peacekeepers because I know that's yeah. Josh's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. like, right, like you can understand who you're directly speaking speaking to right now and change up your messaging or maybe the the final CTA that you want to give, or again, whatever the point is of your speech, right? But you can really get clear with the people that are in the room with you right now. So your pitch or your speech or your presentation aligns so much more with what they need to hear because you know exactly who you're speaking to and sort of where they're at. She also Um, used her own quiz analytics to like say like, you know, I don't remember the results either. I'm sorry, but like, the first result was the, she was like this is the most common almost everybody yeah. gets this one and then the least common she was like fun fact you guys are special or like you're unique um this is very rare and like it's just like a, such a good way to like reinforce people in who they are as a person um anyway i just like it was such a great presentation i don't even know if we answered your question but overall that no, was like, the biggest <laughs> one yeah that was the biggest one with quizzes but the other ones were like how Jackie said, where they would end on like, hey, here's my quiz, go take it so you can learn more about me. Mm-hmm. I would love to be able to ask everyone that attended the conference, like which presentation was most memorable for them. And I wonder if Ellen Yins would be one of them because of the quiz. Yeah, that is a good question. It did stand mm-hmm. out because it wasn't like any of the other presentations, not like downplaying any of the other presentations. They were great, but this one really stood out because the format was entirely different, leading mm-hmm. somebody through a quiz like that. Yeah, love that. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. cool. I'm just going to – can I just say one more thing about Ellen's quiz? The, the reason, like, because we're talking about, like, understand your goal, understand, mm-hmm. like, what you're using this quiz for. The reason, one of the big reasons Ellen does this on stage, in addition to the benefits of using a quiz, is her goal is to grow her podcast. So she's trying to bump her podcast up into the top, I forget the official name, but like top Apple charts, right? Like top 100 in Apple play, uh, Apple podcasts. And so by collecting people's emails, by understanding what their CEO style is, she's then emailing them specific podcasts that they should listen to based on where they're at, what they need to hear, mm-hmm. what they want to know more about. Maybe she does like guest episodes that align with peacekeepers versus magnetic connectors. Yeah. She can completely mm-hmm customize your curate a podcast playlist list for you very different than the one I'm going to get just based on the information she's gathered from the quiz and so that's helping to grow her podcast which as she's getting more followers she's growing it in the in the apple charts so that's that's her use case and her goal behind it and I just think she again kudos Ellen because it was like excellent delivery on uh how that all works yeah And for those who are listening, if you're interested in doing something similar, you're going to speak at a conference coming up. We have an episode um, that we'll link in the show notes specific to using quizzes at conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, any last minute sort of wins, not really losses, but like, I guess, challenges of the last conference before we close out? Just the winter in Dallas. It snowed. It never <laughs> snows. It never delays. But other than that, huge shout out to Laylee for hosting the conference. Mm-hmm. Huge shout out to all of the speakers that were there. Um, I learned a ton. We should do a whole nother episode of just like recapping the things that we learned. But for sure, be on the lookout for our sort of post-conference quiz because that's something that we really want to put together uh, to sort of tailor or curate resources based mm-hmm. on what people need. Love it. All right, guys. Well, as always, let us know if you have any questions um, and check out our now publicly facing AI at trinerack.com slash AI. 
and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.